Welcome back to another Dogs Band Model Railway review. Today we'll be looking at the Eureka CPH Rail Motor and CTH Trailer Pack. Uh, these units are also known as Tin Hairs. They enter service on the 17th of the 12th, 1923. 37 of this particular class of rail car were built. The recommended retail price is $440 without sound and $539 with sound. And if you want weathering, that'll be another $25. Final withdrawals of this class happened in 1985 and there's still 28 of them still around. Several of them in working order. Anyway, this is a sound, sound unit, so after I put this video up, I'll, be, I'll do a quick running video of her in, in action. Also, a quick note, before um, when I was running this when I first got it, it did hit the ground, so there may be a few pieces missing. I think it's only really uh, one of the marker lights. But anyway, let's begin. Slide the top of the box off. Um, when this is new, you'd have had an instruction manual here. I'm not sure where it's got to, but it's a uh, Santa Cruz I Rico manual. So, what do you reckon? What should we get out first? The trailer or the actual rail motor? I reckon we'll start with the lighter thing, the rail motor. Uh, with, with these ones, you, you grab you grab the bit of uh, thread there. And pull it out. Uh, I actually just pulled out the drive unit, so let's pull the trailer out too. Also, we have a cup, a coupling to go between both units because um, CPH rail motors did not have an automatic coupling. We'll put that to the one side for the time being. So we'll start with the drive unit. The first thing you, you realise when you pick this up, it is heavy. It is heavy, heavy, like quite literally. You can't, you can barely hold it with, with one hand and hold it upright. You've got to use both to support it. These units have interior lighting, all-wheel drive, sprung buffers, uh, directional lighting with marker lights comes comes with a driver in the cab comes with a beautiful ra radiator grill as you see here that's what I like about tin hairs their radiator grill is quite an interesting thing to look at you have a little windscreen wiper you got a cow catcher air hoses and sprung buffers on the side ooh, these things are heavy you got ladders uh, separately applied wire handrails separately applied ladders air vents on the rear, rear of the drive unit again you got buffers a uh, cow, uh, cow catcher and just general detail and that inside the same as the other side okay so now let's go underneath underneath you'll you will see an on off switch for for the directional lighting a headlight and the marker lights for you DC operators you have underbody detail I think it's the trans transmission and fuel tank Put the drive unit down. On the trailer, you have again an operating headlight, operating marker lights, cow catcher, sprung buffers, air hose detail. Separately applied handrails. I uh, believe there's a decoder in there to help control the lighting. I um, mean, you also have interior detail on this unit, I believe. You've got seats. I can see seats. 
the only bit that actually lost when it hit the ground was this back horn here. So I, I think that's a fairly um, um, good model if it survives a crack crash in the ground. Underneath, we, you have an on-off switch for the lighting in the unit. Um, all wheel pickup on both units and underbody detail. Now, to hook these units up, you, you take the uh, coupler, you put the coupler in, and as a bolt, you hooks onto. Then you take the drive unit. It doesn't matter which way I believe you put it. You you line up between the ca between the cow catcher and you the, you got a hole in the cow catcher. You put it through. Put in. Push together, and now that is firmly connected. Let's put it, put it on the track and see how she goes.